Photosynthesis Required Practical Part 2 by kscience.com. We're now going to look at how to interpret the results that you gather from this experiment. In this made up experiment, we had our Elodea, our pondweed, at these distances away from the light source at 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60 centimeters away from the light source. So now let's see the volume of oxygen collected in each syringe at each of the differing distances away from the light source. So at 10 centimeters away from the light source, there was nine centimeters cubed of oxygen collected by the syringe. At 20 centimeters away, it was seven. At 30 centimeters away, it was six. At 40 centimeters away, it was four. And then at 50 and 60 centimeters away from the light source, there was a three centimeters cubed oxygen volume collected by the syringes. Let's now plot a graph of the distance the plant was away from the light source against the volume of oxygen collected by the syringes. Along the x-axis is where you always put your independent variable, what you change. So in this case, it was the distance away from the light source. And what you measure, your dependent variable, always goes on the y-axis. So on the y-axis for this experiment, it is the volume of oxygen collected. So I now plot the points on the graph from the data we collected. I think that I have identified an anomalous result here. It might be, it might not be. But for this case, we're going to exclude it from our line of best fit. And then we draw a line of best fit going through as many of the points as possible. So what conclusions can we draw by looking at the trend in this graph? So if we say that the closer the plant is to the light source, the higher the light intensity, we can draw the following conclusions. So if you increase the light intensity, increase the light intensity, you increase the volume of oxygen produced by the plant by photosynthesis. So therefore, there is an increased rate of photosynthesis. So the closer the plant is to the light source, the more oxygen is being produced by the plant. Therefore, we can say that the closer the light source to the plant, the faster the rate of photosynthesis. It's question time. Attempt these questions to check your understanding. We're now going to use the inverse square law to produce a graph of light intensity against volume of oxygen produced. And this is how we do it. So the inverse square law is light intensity is proportional to one over distance squared. So we're not going to use the data from the previous experiment. What we've done here is use new data. So we've got the distance from the light source going from 10 centimeters up to 45 centimeters away from the light source. And what we've now put in is the volume of oxygen produced at each of the different distances away from the light source. You can already see a trend whereby the closer the pondweed is to the light source, the more oxygen has been produced. But let's now use the distance away from the light source to calculate the light intensity in arbitrary units. I'm going to go for the first one with you and then you can calculate the rest by yourself. So for the first one, it is 10 centimeters away from the light source. So you do 1 divided by 10 squared. That gives you an answer of 0.01 arbitrary units. So as you can see, what I've done here is just do 1 divided by the distance squared. And that gives you an answer in arbitrary units for each of the different distances. And then what you can do is do a graph of light intensity against volume of oxygen produced, whereby the volume of oxygen produced is an indicator for the rate of photosynthesis. And your graph should look like this if you have done enough distances away from the light source. Watch my video on limiting factors to have an insight into the reason why 
this graph looks the way it does. Press pause to answer the questions. The answers will follow. And if you're stuck, just rewatch the video. Press pause to go through your answers and make any corrections to your mistakes. Visit kscience.com for more free videos, worksheets and quizzes at kscience.com. And don't forget to like and subscribe.